بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today we will have case quiz number 85 which is actually the continuation of the previous case 84 just to revise the case data for the uh, last week it was uh, old uh, woman 73 years old complaining of subacute onset of severe pain in the neck shoulder lower back and hips Uh, worsened progressively at the period over the period of 12 weeks associated with uh, loss of appetite and substantial stiffness in the shoulder and back with difficulty in turning over the bed. On examination, the patient had mellow, uh, uh, moderate bladder with evidence, with no evidence of lymphadenopathy or cyromegaly, uh, normal pulse and blood pressure, but faint systolic murmur and the mild weakness in the shoulder girdle and the mild resting tremors of the hands but no muscle tenderness noted and intermittent nighttime pyrexia and sweating investigation show low hemoglobin high white bcs and high platelet high esr shooting esr and shooting high uh, crb but normal other lab and radiographs And the patient was diagnosed as having polymyalgia rheumatica, as you remember. However, follow-up of the same case show the treatment and initial outcomes of this patient: oral prednisolone 15 mg daily and oral bisphosphonate alendronate 70 mg weekly for bone protection. This led to the patient symptoms improved within. 14, uh, 24 hours, sorry, and she was discharged three days later with a follow-up appointment planned for four weeks after discharge. So the patient received only low-dose steroid and alendronate with improvement started from the first day after the treatment, and she only admitted for three days and then uh, discharged with a plan to come again after four weeks. However, Two weeks after the discharge, the patient presented to an outpatient clinic because she had developed nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, skin rash over the legs, painful mouth ulcers, and further decline in her appetite. The new investigations showed low hemoglobin level more than the previous picture, uh, elevated white BCs and platelet over the previous picture. Uh, raised serum urea and creatinine levels, raised ESR and CRB again after decline after treatment. Urine domestic test revealed hematuria and proteinuria, which was normal in the first visit. Urine microscopy revealed the presence of red blood cell but no casts. Creatinine clearance considerably reduced. ANCA B was positive, but ANCA C was negative. My universe antibody level were markedly elevated. Tests for antibodies against proteinase 3 and glomerular basement membrane were negative. A complete clotting screen, including measurement of the level of anticardiolipin, was normal. Chest radiograph, ECG, and ultrasound of the abdomen show no abnormalities. Renal biopsy revealed histological features of crescentic glomerulonephritis uh, and vasculitis. So, the new presentation is totally different from the, uh, the previous presentation. The new presentation marked anemia, marked thrombocytosis, and Uh, leukocytosis, shooting ESR and CRB, which is similar to the, the previous uh, presentation, but urine domestic revealed hematuria, creatine clearance uh, reduced markedly, creatine and urea elevated, ANCA B positive, botanase 3 negative, uh, and Renal biopsy revealed the histological features of crescentic glomerulonephritis and vasculitis. So, what is the new diagnosis? 
taking in consideration that the patient was diagnosed already as polymyalgia rheumatica. The new answer is microscopic polyanxitis. Microscopic polyanxitis MPA. Discussion of the diagnosis. Taking the case from the start, from the previous quiz, BMR is a clinical syndrome of unknown etiology as we know, characterized by severe aching and stiffness in the neck, shoulder girdle, and pelvic girdle, often associated with moderate normochromic normocytic anemia but not marked anemia as in our case. The prevalence is to be estimated to be 1 in every 200 people aged 50 years or older with white people affected more than other ethnic groups and females are affected twice as often as males. Our patient was initially diagnosed with BMR because she not only fulfilled the criteria of Baird and Jones and Hasselman for the diagnosis of BMR or actually the classification of BMR, but also because diseases with other similar presenting features to BMR were excluded by appropriate clinical, surgical, biochemical, and radiological investigations. The only red flag here was the patient had marked anemia, which is uncommon in patients with BMR, so follow-up will reveal the other diagnosis. In fact, we have three hypotheses here. The first, did this case had only BMR, polymyalgia rheumatica, at the start and then developed MBA later on? But the short duration of only two weeks uh, make this uh, unlike. The other hypothesis is, did this case had MBA and BMR from the start? This is the second hypothesis. The third hypothesis is that BMR is a wrong diagnosis and the case is only microscopic polyanxitis. We will discuss the three hypotheses. It could be suggested that the patient had MBA at the time of presentation, although she didn't have any clinical features of any diseases other than classical BMR. ANCA test was not performed at the time of the first visit as she showed no evidence of any joint symptoms or mucocutaneous disorders and her urine diabetic didn't show any evidence of hematuria and proteinuria. The patient later developed an extensive maculobubular rash on her legs, painful mouth ulcers, and abnormal renal biochemistry which indicated a systemic vasculitis. She was investigated surgically and histologically with confirmed ANCA positive vas uh, vasculitis with crescentic glomerulonephritis, and, and infection here were ruled out by extensive investigations. So, the first possibility here is the patient had either MBA from the start or developed MBA rapidly later on after the diagnosis of uh, BMR. On the other hand, the patient initially fulfilled the criteria for BMR when there, there were no indicators of vasculitis, which may indicate a serial progression of BMR to ANCA positive vasculitis. But the question here is uh, the, the duration between the diagnosis of BMR, the onset of BMR, and the onset of ANCA associated vasculitis is only two weeks, which is very short. Moreover, in a retrospective case control study in a renal unit, it was concluded that small visceral vasculitis such as MBA is frequently misdiagnosed as BMR in the elderly, especially in patients with indolent disease, although the outcome of the patient didn't seem to be adversely affected. So, it was recorded already that some cases of, B of uh, MBA or uh, ANCA associated small visit vasculitis may, uh, may, uh, may be uh, misdiagnosed as BMR at the start, especially in elderly patients. So we didn't know actually what is the right hypothesis. Is it BMR from the start and then develop MBA? Is it combination of BMA and 
MBA from the start from the onset, or it is only MBA case and misdiagnosed as BMR, but later on developed and completed the criteria for MBA, we didn't know the right answer. Regarding the treatment of this patient, the patient was then treated with intravenous pulses of cyclophosphamide 500 mg and methylprednisolone 500 mg once every two weeks. Orabidnisolone was gradually tapered and bisphosphonate were continued. She began to show clinical signs of improvement with amelioration of her skin rash, mouth ulcers, and shortness of breath, and she regained her appetite and her weight increased. Her renal functions as measured by creatinine clearance and levels of urea and electrolytes returned to normal. She was discharged two weeks later but continued intravenous pulses of cyclophosphamide and methylprednisolone 500mg every two weeks. Six cycles of therapy were planned with gradual reduction in frequency dependent on clinical response. Before we can jump to key message, uh, I need to tell you that this case is a very complicated case. It is not only BMR and MBA. The case developed later on B cell lymphoma, which is malignancy not uncommon to be associated, associated with BMR, but the uh, association between BMR, MBA, and B cell lymphoma in a very short interval between the onset of BMR, the onset of MBA, and the diagnosis of B-cell lymphoma, all of this occurred within few weeks to few months, and the patient died after three months, or, uh, actually. Uh, the case report of this, uh, of this case uh, uh, is included in the description of this video uh, from the original link of the, of the, uh, of the authors, I mean. So we can jump to key messages. Key message. Our case demonstrates the importance of assessing a patient with suspected BMR for underlying systemic vasculitis, especially if the patient develops atypical features. And the association between BMR and small visible vasculitis is not uncommon. And finally, thank you very much for your attendance, and we will meet you tomorrow with case quiz number 86. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.